Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Rich Tarani in the TMC Newsroom today. On our program is David Yedwab, and he is a principal at uh, Market Strategy and Analytics Partners. David, how are you? Fine, Rich, and you? Now, did I say that right? Are you a principal or are you a partner? partner doesn't matter. I mean the same thing? Same thing. Okay, so that's good. Well, thanks for coming up. This is your first time to TMC's HQ? To the new headquarters, yes. As a matter of fact, originally I wanted to be your first visitor, but we just couldn't coordinate calendars, so I guess let's hope I'm not your last. You definitely won't be, but you definitely picked one of the hottest days of the year to visit us, which uh, we appreciate you braving the, the heat. Well, driving from New Jersey to Connecticut across New York in 100 degree plus heat, I really must have wanted to get here. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Absolutely, and we appreciate you being here. And uh, there are a couple things that I wanted to talk with you about, uh, mostly centering around AT&T. They've got some interesting news in that um, they seem to be making uh, a push to have their marketing and advertising be more transparent as it relates to banner ads, uh, giving users more information about uh, the uh, things that will be tracked about them, allowing them to opt out. I mean, that seems to be a, uh, an important trend in an age where privacy is becoming so important. Yeah, and it, it's sort of interesting that in, in at least in this instance, AT&T seems to be the good guy as opposed to having their hands slapped and, and thought of as the bad guy on, 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 a, on a number of instances. Well, generally network performance. Yeah, but, but you know, the, the whole idea of, of letting users know what information is being tracked about them when you click on an ad or read an ad or observe an ad and how it's going to be used, if it's more than just being used statistically, I think is very good. And it's nice to see AT&T taking a lead to, su to support the consumer, to support the user. And it also shines a light on the, um, the increased amount of information that companies have uh, regarding customers, but more importantly, the increased consolidation of data in the hands of a few companies, Facebook, for example, between uh, their own site plus the uh, sites that they work with. All the partners. Of, yeah, sure, the like buttons, the login buttons, etc. I mean, they've got some uh, incredible information about customers. Yahoo as well. Uh, just the And let's not forget Google. Yeah, Google is, without a doubt, um, not only Google, but now the double-click acquisition of a few years ago. They also now have... Uh, huge uh, assets in the mobile ad space. Um, they've got mobile uh, mobile apps that allow you to track location. I, I mean, it's just insane how much data and, they have. And with, with all of the recent stories about security breaches and, and privacy and issues and businesses being built up to try to create privacy for individuals on the internet, um, it, it's, it's really, in a way, scary how easy it is to be tracked, to be found. Absolutely. Um, most of the time legitimately, but who knows? There are certainly a lot of bad things going on, like the recent hacking of iTunes and, and, and people being billed for apps that they never even heard of. Absolutely, and that gets us back to AT&T. I mean, they had another interesting... Uh, snafu on their network just yesterday where upload speeds had slowed to a crawl. Our own um, Tom Keating uh, was complaining yesterday uh, that he couldn't stream music because on his way home because he had some problems with the uh, AT&T network and he did some download tests that were uh, terrible. And as it turns out, today we heard the answer to, as to why the, the upload speeds were bad, right? Yeah, yeah. apparently um, Alcatel-Lucent, one of the suppliers of the cellular infrastructure for AT&T's network, um, has publicly admitted that they, there is some glitch in the way their infrastructure works with the, the, new, the new iPhone and is causing limited upload speeds from, from the iPhone 4. No, in his case, it wasn't even an iPhone 4, so it didn't even seem to be limited to iPhones, and I find it surprising that so many journalists seem to be having the problem because the news is that only 2% of customers are being affected. So it seems maybe those 2% are all journalists or they're located on the east and west coasts. Or maybe it's that spying thing again and somebody's after the journalists. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. But it's, it's sort of interesting the way, um, to a large degree, AT&T has been perceived as the bad guy in the network performance, 
um, the, the download speed, the, the network quality, and until the iPhone 4 came out, Apple has been the clean person, the, the clean player in the issue, whereas their network provider um, seems to have gotten the blame. Now at least the blame seems to be going back and forth between AT&T and, and Apple. Sure. It may not just be the network provider. Sure. But, but again, back to our issue about networks and devices, um, they're, they're interconnected and they've got to work well together or the user experience is going to be bad. And as, as Tom's experience yesterday, and as my recent experience with since upgrading my old iPhone to the new software operating system. That's iOS 4. iOS 4, my performance is degraded significantly. And I read about that on someone else's blog yesterday. Yeah, and that's a challenge. I mean, the other challenge there is that I've noticed a lot of apps aren't iOS 4 ready. So upgrading... Uh, just like on a PC, I mean, we thought the iPhone was such a different device, but the problems we had on PCs are uh, coming to the iPhone as well, right? You don't want to upgrade too early. Well, that w which which sort of gets back to the network-based applications versus device-based applications, and is it easier to keep things current in the network in a cloud environment or a hosted environment, or to keep things current on the device? And that trade-off back and forth is, is going to be real critical. And, and certainly, network providers and device make makers are going to have to work better together to make sure that the user quality of experience isn't really affected too much. And least. now that's multiplied times the entire ecosystem of 200,000 apps, right? Right. 225,000, I think, at last count. So um, we'll see how this shakes out. Uh, Dave, thanks for being on the program today and looking forward to having you back on again. Great. Thank you, Rich.